Uh, tonight we have another special guest. We have Isabella Frezzo We're joining us very shortly. Um, you know, she is also another you know superstar athlete, a grappler, and uh, and wrestler as well. So we're going to talk to her today. We're going to uh, wait for her to come on, and then we'll get her we'll get her started. Um, You guys are all enjoying your uh, your quarantine life. Oh, there we go. We got we got around me now. What's going on? Hi. <laughs> we got your. We're, we're jamming out a little bit to your uh, your music right now. You can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So, what we're gonna do a little different now. We I was just introducing introducing you. What we're gonna do now, um, since we only have an hour. We're gonna talk, we're gonna maybe talk for about a half hour with you, and then halfway through we'll be able to answer some questions. I know some people uh, were, were asking questions yesterday. we were early, and by the time we got to them, they were probably off and everything. So we're gonna do like half and half now. Um, so um, how you feeling right now? I know we just had a, a, a Zoom practice with each other. The Zoom was uh, really good. I yes. that was the first like official uh, freestyle practice. Yes. So it was pretty cool to do some of that like freestyle stuff. Yeah, we're we're taking our uh quarantine very, very <laughs> serious. You know, we uh you know, I know there's some people out there that are training with their, you know, their brothers or sisters and kind of close professors and, 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 and really not we can't go back into our whole routine where, you know, we're we're going all over and training and being around a lot of people. So I'm glad that you're staying safe and you know, we we um you know, we're doing the Zoom classes, and and, and you know, the kids are loving it, and um, uh, our uh, high school youth kids are all they're all enjoying it. So, uh, hopefully, you keep coming on. We, I know you'd be a, a star, uh, freestyle wrestler. So, we're looking for big things for you. So, welcome today, guys, Isabella Frezzo. So, all right. So, I mean, let's begin now. Let's talk on that real quick. Let's talk about. Um, you know, you being in, I asked a couple of people about being in quarantine and stuff like that. Um, I know it, it changes up your whole schedule. So how's it been? What have you been, like, what have you been doing? Uh, it's been pretty rough, actually, since, like, my whole routine is, like, I wake up, I go to school, then I come home or I'll wrestle, and then I have jiu-jitsu. So, like, now it's I wake up, I do school for, like, two, three hours, and then I try to get some sort of, like, workout in because there's not much I can do so I've been mostly running a lot a lot of like home like cardio stuff like that like pull-ups push-ups like stuff I can do on my own where I don't really need a partner like I said today I did the zoom so if I find the opportunity where I can hop on a zoom and do a couple things on there then I find it really beneficial that's great I mean I know I know the the uh, jiu-jitsu school that you go to notorious they're also doing um uh zoom classes as well right. and I know you've been uh helping out and, and teaching little kid class and stuff like that. So, I mean, if this is the best that we can do, I mean, at least it's something. And at least, you know, you're getting a workout in. I'm getting workouts in. The kids are getting workouts in. Um, but sooner or later, we'll all be back to our, our, our original routines. And uh, I know um, we have a lot of big goals. Everybody has goals. Um, we talked to Frankie Edgar the other night, and we talked to Aaron Blanchard last night. You know, these are people that were wanted to fight in May and June. So um, at a professional level. So they're trying to, you know, they're in their basements. They're wrestling poles. They're wrestling their wives. <laughs> wrestling their brothers or sisters. I mean, they're doing whatever it takes to get workouts in. So um, I think it's a good time that, you know, we're also with our families and stuff like that. And, you know, everyone seems to get closer. So, um, you know, it, you know, it's kind of a blessing you know, from the skies, I guess, you know, so uh, I know you got, um, you, 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 you do jujitsu and you do, and you do wrestling. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about jujitsu first and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to a little bit of wrestling. So started jujitsu at seven, right? Seven years old. Yeah. Seven years old. And how did you come about starting? Like, you know, were you, someone just brought you to the room, your parents, or are you just, um, I had started boxing with my dad when I was really small. Like we were just like, I was hitting some pads and stuff like that. And then I had gone to like another like little karate dojo that was near my gym. And then my chiropractor had actually, his son was training and he was like, no, like, I think that would be great for her. Like she's super active. And I was like, my parents, they were just like, yeah, we'll put her in it. Like she is pretty active. 
really aggressive, so it, it'll work out. So I tried it, I ended up loving it. And then two years later, I had moved over to uh, Notorious. Well, it wasn't Notorious at the time, but it had changed into Notorious. So it was really, it was really a long journey getting into Jiu Jitsu, like not like super long, but I had done stuff before that, but I was always like in some sort of martial arts my whole life. So you never, you never played any other sport? Um, I did softball for a little bit. Uh, when did you do that when you were younger? Or yeah, you... I was in second grade. It was, it came to, I was doing softball for like a year or two. And then jujitsu became like, you know, my passion, obviously. And I, in my head, I was like, no, I have to choose between wrestling. I mean, not wrestling, jujitsu yeah. or softball. I was like, it's, it's gotta be one or the other. Like I want to commit to it fully. So I decided that I was going to fully commit to jujitsu and here I am, like nine that's, years later almost. <laughs> that's, all, that's awesome. I mean, so, you know, there are people that do, do jiu-jitsu and just simply do jiu-jitsu just to stay in shape and, and do something different. Uh, you know, you got older people starting at 40 and, and going in and they just want to do something different to stay active and stuff like that. So you start at seven years old and I'm guessing um, you might have just, you know, worked out for a couple months or and then... Uh, or maybe not, but when did you decide that you wanted to do it competitively? Um, it wasn't, it actually wasn't long after I had started. It was maybe like somewhere between nine months and a year that I decided like I'm going to start competing. But I, I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't doing too well in the tournaments uh, until I had switched over to uh, training with Fiona. And uh, right at that like two year mark was like, this is, I, I want to do this. So uh, I had started with Fiona and, uh, the kids were getting ready for the biggest kids tournament, uh, which was uh, kids pans. And I was only training with her for like a month. And my parents were like, you know, you're not you're not ready for that. Um, but if you if you're really, you know, really want to go, you're going to have to step up and train and we'll, we'll go next year. And uh, ever since that, I, I saw that those kids went to California to compete. And that was one of the coolest things for me, you know, as like a nine year old, that, that was really cool for me to see, you know. So I had started training really hard for that. The whole year I prepared. And, uh, and then the following year I had gone to uh, my first kids' pants at 10 years old. So, so wait, you didn't, did you compete in any local tournaments first? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was local stuff. Like I had probably done close to like 15 tournaments within the year, just like, and I was killing it. You know, I, I was, I had gray belt for a couple months. And after I switched, to gyms, I had uh, Fiona promoted me to yellow belt, uh, and then I started getting really super, you know, competitive matches in the tournaments, and I was like getting ready for, for the biggest tournament, you know. Yeah. So one. how old were you when you went to Pens? Ten. Ten years old, right? You 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 fly across the whole United I mean, across yeah. the whole United States. You're with your family. And you go to, how did you end up doing with your first time out there? The first time I, uh, I actually won the whole thing. And ever since that year, I won five consecutive kids pants titles. And uh, it, it was, it was something different, obviously, for me, uh, because um, I had competed in other states. But this was an event that was, it, it honestly, it does remind me of the uh, New Jersey states. It, like the way that it's set up. So yeah. But as a 10 year old, I had never seen something like that before. And I was like, oh my God, like it was yeah, something course. crazy. Of course. And, and, and the thing is like, you know, like wrestling and jiu the same thing. I mean, to travel, to compete, to do all that, it's not cheap. You know, <laughs> it, it really is, uh, you know, so you gotta have support from your family. Right, I, family. I, you yeah. know, you go into your first tournament at 10 years old to go across the United States and spend money on your flights and all that. It, you know, your coaches and your family had to have some some confidence in you that you're going to go out there and you, you're going to do something um, because you are traveling far away. I mean, it isn't cheap. I mean, so tell me about, like, the support of your family. Um, my parents have been really supportive of everything I've done, even since I was really little. Um, I know a lot of uh, females have approached me and asked me, like, how do you get your parents to be supportive of what you do? And I'm like... Honestly, they've been supportive since day one, so I've never really had that issue. Um, but my parents see it in me that I'm really determined to, like, when I want something, I will go after it and I will put all my heart and every single ounce of effort that I have into it because I'm not going to do something and, like, not give 100%. It's not worth it to me. So 
I mean, yeah, if you're seeing a 10 year old, you know, you're kind of like, how much are, do they really want this? But when I tell you I was training like freaking beast, I was, I, it was crazy. Well, we, we had uh, Erin Blanchfield on yesterday and she had a very similar story talking about, you know, when, when people watch her train and when I watch her train, um, I can see that fire in her eyes that she, she wants it and that she really, you know, wants to uh, achieve most she can in the sport. Um, I, I see the same similarities in you. And I, you know, I know how passionate you are about jiu-jitsu and, and how much you love it. And, you know, you going out and you're winning, like you said, five Kid Pan Am titles. And then you uh, ended up winning uh, a no-gi juvenile, I guess the next division. And then the no-gi, yes. well, first there was no-gi pans. Yes. And then there was no-gi worlds, like two or three months after that. Well, that, that just happened recently, right? Yeah, that was in December. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So uh, I guess I can start with uh, I was how I was out for like a season. Like, cause, so I, well, I, don't get into that. I want to get oh, into okay, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I had, um, I went to the, the Nogi Pans, which was in New York. So it was, it was kind of, a, it was a little bit of a smaller event. Most of the bigger events are on the West Coast, unfortunately. But uh, it was fine. It was just. I had my match in uh, New York and I ended up becoming the no gi pan champ. And then uh, it was like two or three months later, right before the wrestling season start. Well, no, actually the wrestling season did start. And then uh, I was in between jujitsu training and wrestling training. And I had gone and just went to California, competed, came back. And then it was wrestling season, like full blown wrestling season. Awesome. Uh, guys, so whoever's like, whoever's on online right now, um, again, halfway through this interview we're gonna you know get some questions go back to interview and then some questions at the end if we run out of time and and uh bella wants to talk a little bit more we can so if you want to just kind of save a little bit of the questions for uh for her maybe halfway through it i'll let you guys know i know some people say hi to you and stuff like that <laughs> so you can say hi to them um i think i'm gonna mess this one up and and say uh you competed uh on stage at the Kasai Pro? Kids? Yeah, Kasai, yeah. Kasai Pro, okay. Uh, was that the one I went to? Was I at that one? Or was that the one in No, that was, that was a Men of War tour. That was a Men oh, of okay, War okay, okay. Okay, so what, what's the significance of, the, of that one, Kasai Pro? Okay, so Kasai is like uh, a super fight, and you it's in front of like a whole bunch of people. It was in New York in the Hammerstein Ballroom, and uh, that was the – it wasn't the first super fight I did, but it was the first really big event that I had done that was individual, like, in front of everyone. So uh, that was that was really exciting. Uh, it was something different um, for me because, like I said, I'm always competing at, uh, you know, like, the world and cans and all that stuff. So it was definitely a big step in, in the right direction. And it was, it was cool. You get to walk out in front of everyone and you get to be on stage and – it's yeah. just you and your opponent fighting, and that's it. So it, it looks it looks very similar. Uh, the setup and how everything goes, how um, MMA fighters come out. Right, right. After gone, you guys, you guys, you know, have your sponsors on. Um, you walk out with your with your coaches. Uh, you go on stage and you have your own music and stuff like that. Um, I think it's really cool the way they they set that up. And I know a lot of these tournaments are for money. Um, you know, some are just for belts, but I know people can make a living, you know, out of that yeah. means the best guys in the world that can make a living, you know, going to tournament to tournament, doing seminars and all that stuff like that. Is that something like down the line what you think you want to do? Um, I don't know if I could really live off of jujitsu in that way. Yeah. Um it, it is it is definitely hard because you have to compete every weekend pretty much if you want to be able to live like that. And um, because it's 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 not like the UFC where you're getting paid like a hundred thousand dollars to do one fight. It's not like that. That's very so, small. Small amount of people get that money. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying. So that that's like in the UFC, but in Jiu Jitsu, it's it's not really like that. If you, it's a couple grand. Right? It's it's oh, yeah. So like you living off of that. I mean, you could do it, but and I mean, a lot of the guys live off sponsors. Right. And 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 they, they their travels are and everything is taken care of. They're, they're given meals and, and, and supplements and stuff like that. Um, you know, I follow a lot of the, you know, the, the top tier guys and stuff like that. Um, so why don't we just change um, into, into into different sports? We can go back to jiu-jitsu because there's a couple more questions I still got to ask about that. Um, so 
Let's go into your wrestling career right now. I mean, you started in eighth or seventh grade? Eighth grade. Eighth grade? Okay. And um, how, what was like, I mean, who got you into it? I mean, like, who, who was like, <laughs> go, out, go out for wrestling? I mean, so I had um, gone to my school's uh, high school orientation, and I guess it had happened right before the wrestling season started. So it must have been like somewhere between October and November. And um, I had walked into the gym and I saw that my school had a weight room. And of course I was being super interested in my school having a weight room that, that they didn't have that at my middle school. So yeah. I was like, oh, I have to go, I have to go. So I uh, had re run across the gym and my mom was behind me and the, he's the gym teacher and he's the wrestling coach. So he was like, is that your daughter? And she was like, yeah. She was, he was like, does she do some sort of like martial arts or something? And she was like, yeah, she does. And he was like, you know, she should wrestle. And then I was like, I mean, it's not a bad idea. I, I was always thinking I would wrestle and it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that, to get better at jiu-jitsu. So that's how I ended up starting wrestling. I mean, I mean, there, there's, there's people now Like I train, you know, MMA fighters and, and they're in their twenties already. And one thing that they always say was they wish they started wrestling when they were younger. And, you know, because it obviously helps their jiu-jitsu. You're in eighth grade right now. I mean, and, and they ask you to come out for wrestling. Um, did right then and there, did you think like, like, man, uh, this could be great for my jiu-jitsu? Or were you just like, you know what? I want to do something else. I, I, I'd like to do it because it's another form of grappling. Like, you know, what were your thoughts on that? Um, initially, initially, I don't know if I actually thought that I was going to get as far as I did. Um, I was sort of looking at it more like, cause at the time I wasn't, I didn't really have a good stand up game. So for me, I was looking to improve my takedowns a lot. And you know, if you do takedowns every single day, you're going to get better. So eventually I did get better and, and my season didn't go awful. It was, it was okay for first year wrestler. I did pretty good. Um, but it, it honestly, it really does help my jiu-jitsu. And I, that, that's mainly how I was looking at it at the time. Was that uh, Coach Sanabrino you were talking about? Yeah, yeah. All right, good guy. Great, Mike Sanabrino, yeah. great guy. Um, so you wrestled in the, how many times did you wrestle in the, you, did you wrestle once or twice in the youth states? I think it, they might have let you wrestle your freshman year too, right? Yeah, so it ended up uh, girls' states wasn't really a thing until my sophomore year, so my freshman year, it was still technically, I think it's called like NJ kit kids or kids girls, kids. something like that. But Did it was you wrestle in eighth grade kids? Kids? No, 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 just the girls one. But it was, yeah. it was in union at a boys qualifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the states. That. Yeah, you, yeah. Won, you won, correct? Yeah. You won, okay. So you, you win a so-called youth state title. Yeah. You know, you know, kids in JSI states they haven't been going. Um, Right then and there, did you think like, okay, you know, there was really no girls yet too yet. I mean, like really no girls state tournament. Did you think like automatically like, hey, I may be, I may be pretty successful in wrestling, but um, did you think that or? Um, I think as the season had progressed and by the time we got to the end of the season and I saw like what I was actually capable of, it kind of, um, it motivated me to like get better for the next season and, uh, you know, just improve and, Obviously, high school wrestling is much different than eighth grade wrestling. And at the time, I didn't really know that it would be so different. But it, it honestly, it's a big step going from eighth grade to like high school. But uh, it, it was a good, it was something good for me. And uh, it definitely motivated me for the next season that came up. Yeah. So I, I know we've been working with each other for a couple of years with some wrestling. Um, I think we met like maybe five years ago. Yeah, it was probably a while ago. <laughs> At a jiu-jitsu gym, and I, I, I've been literally trying to recruit you for wrestling for a, a long time, and uh, it's just, you know, if, if the shoe was on the other foot, and we had a wrestler who, a jiu-jitsu person was trying to convince them, I mean, jiu-jitsu is your first love, so I, I understood it and I embraced it, and I enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed watching you. I, I, I watched you compete and stuff like that. I know deep down inside of my heart, I wanted you to wrestle. And uh, I know I was trying to push you to motivate you. Um, and then, so, um, you know, right, I knew you were going to be successful right away. I knew because you had a, a successful grappling background. Um, you know, right now in New Jersey wrestling, at that time, it was only, I mean, still to this day, 
you got to wrestle an all boy schedule. It's not like there's um, uh, a girl girl on girl schedule during the year. So talk about that. So my freshman year it was only boys. Um, I maybe wrestled a girl one time the whole season, and then well, ex but besides making it when I went to the the girls states at the end of the year, but like the actual in season, there was only one other team that had a female on it. So that was, I mean, I was honestly, I didn't really expect there to be a lot of girls because it, I, I just knew from the prior year that it was only going to be, you know, boys or whatever. And then, um, so yeah, that I, I honestly, and plus when I've done jujitsu, it's only, I rest, I grappled with the boys since I was little. So it, it didn't really affect me too much. So let, all right, so we'll go into, you know, listen, in, in all sports and aspects of sports in, in this life, everybody's going to suffer a setback, okay? And then everyone's – and then it's how you come back from those, those setbacks that make real real true champions, you know? Um, it was last year, I'm guessing around December. Was it December? January 11th, 12th. January 12th. You know the, you know the day. To I'll never the forget day. the day. And, and yeah, uh, you invite me to – you tell me, hey, coach, you know, I got a tournament coming up in Belleville. And I'm like, all right, perfect, man. This is local. I don't got to travel far. I'll go watch her. And um, I get there ready to come watch you. And I run into somebody. I forget who it was. And they were like, they're like, she's not here. I go, what do you mean she's not here? She she invited me to come here to the tournament. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I want to watch her. And they're like, she got hurt. And I said, no way. I'm like, she like banged up. Did she, you know, bloody nose? Did she mess up her finger? Whatever it was. And they're like, no, it's bad. It's like she got, she got taken out in a stretcher. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. And I'm, I'm not sure how I found out. I don't know if I texted maybe you or your mother might have answered me back or something like that. And you suffered probably your worst injury in your career, right? Yeah, that was my first ever. So explain, like, kind of the, the moment, the incident, what exactly happened, and what was the injury? So it was only a couple seconds into the match. I had gotten taken down, and I think we had run out of bounds. And so we had started in a referee's position. I was on bottom. The ref blew the whistle, and I uh, tripoded up. I tried to come up to my, you know, my feet. And as soon as I tried to even – before I could even take my hands off the mat, the kid had chopped really hard. My whole elbow dislocated. And at that point, like, I didn't really know what to do. So I was kind of just laying there on the mat, like, face up. And I'm like, um, I don't know what's going on right now, but it's definitely not. So it, it wasn't a good situation. I had looked down at my arm, and it was kind of, like, the best way for me to describe how it was, it was like my arm was numb, and I couldn't feel it at all. And it was like, it was like a dead arm. And I looked at it, and it was hanging out of, like, its socket. And I was like, um, I don't know what to do, but, um, so I had started, like, I was, I was, I was okay, but I looked at it and I was like, oh, I'm done for wrestling for this year. I'm out for world. I, I knew right there that I was going to be out for a while. And, uh, the, I get, uh, the athletic trainer from that team had run over and she popped my arm back in. And I looked at her, and she's like, are you all right? And I was like, I mean, I guess. Like, how all right can you really be? And uh, she was like, you're, you're going to be all right. So uh, she popped it in. Then we, my, I got off the mat, and I was, like, looking at my arm, and it was as, it was huge. It was so big. And uh, we had gone to urgent care. It was just a huge, huge thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was horrible. I know that I was talking to people when they were there, and they were like, Dude, I think her arms, they were saying it's broken. Like, they, they didn't know what was going on. You know, it's like, dude, her arm snapped in half. I was hearing everything. And they were like, but, like, she took it like a champ. She was like, she didn't cry. Um, she, you know, you definitely were just a little bit concerned, like, what was going on. You, know? you probably just have just so much adrenaline going through you. And, and you just, you know, like you said, you felt numb anyway. And um, so, you know, you, you definitely took it, like, you know, like, like I said, like a champ. And, uh. You know, did you end up getting pins put in there, or it was? Uh... I, I was laying on the floor and I was like tapping out on him. No, like, no, I meant, did you get pins in the? In the... <laughs> so, uh, no, I didn't. I don't think I didn't get. I don't think I did. They had actually just um, 
they were able to tie the tendons back together and uh, they had to just relocate my arm back into position a whole bunch of times. And uh, it was the fracture had to heal and everything like that. So, um, I mean, we'll finish off with this and then we'll get, and then we'll get a couple of questions and then, and then we'll move on. I mean, so me as your wrestling coach, um, as your wrestling club coach, um, I've been trying so long to get you out for wrestling and you, you know, I'm, I'm on a tight wire with you because I want to make sure that you love wrestling. I want to make sure that you're doing it, you're enjoying it. When you got injured like that, my heart dropped, number one, because I felt bad for you. I was, I was, it definitely felt bad. And then after I thought about that, number two, I was kind of like, this girl's never going to wrestle again. I go, she is going to knock me because you know what? She got hurt for something that, you know, because her, her real love is jujitsu. And now she's out in all these big tournaments. I go, there's no way this girl's coming back. Um, and luckily, uh, we can talk about that afterwards, your, your recovery. And then you, uh, you came back, and you probably came back better than ever, mentally, physically, and everything like that. So we'll talk about that in the second half. Um, we'll get a couple questions in, guys, if you want to ask a couple questions. And then we'll get that going. I know we got a, couple, we got a lot of kids and club that are in here. A lot of people saying hello. Uh, Vanira saying hello. Um, you got Erica in here. Uh, I think you're one of the club coaches, Chris Lafari. Um, who else we got? I don't know if you see any questions on your end over there. Um, I'm scrolling through it right now. Let's see. Okay. Um, someone said you rock. They like your attitude, your passion. Go Bella. All the best. That was a great competitor. She's always been that way. Uh, then we got guys talking to each other on here. <laughs> Gary, yeah, you got to come in. You got to grind. My brother's on here. Uh, Alessia. We have a girl on here that, um, uh, Alessia, who's one of our uh, younger students. You know, she's very into, uh, you know who she is, right? Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she, you know, she's one of the hardest workers that we got at the club. We talked about her yesterday. I can keep talking about her. Uh, you're, she's a big fan of yours. She definitely looks up to you. And, um, she, uh, you know, wants to be, you know, everything, same that you do, you know. Um, you're an inspiration to her. Uh, my brother says she's a fighter with no quit. Of course, you know, you are. Uh, how, well, Stephanie asked, how long did your injury take to heal? Um, so it probably took between eight and nine months, but I had started training after about a month and a half of being post-op, which I probably shouldn't have done, but... I was getting the itch to go back, so I took initiative and I had a brace on and I was drilling jujitsu techniques. <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was, and I was very, I was pissed off. I know your coaches were pissed off. My physical therapists yeah. were really mad too. Oh, Everyone man, was, was mad at me, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't cleared until about July or August, and I had gotten surgery in February. So, all right, we're gonna try to go to some of these questions quick. Um, do you want to wrestle in college? Uh, maybe. If, if something's close to my house, maybe. I don't want to go far because I have jiu-jitsu, and I love jiu-jitsu. And if wrestling is close to my house, then I'll wrestle. All right. All right. That's not a decision you're going to make just now. Uh, how did you know that you were ready to compete, and how did you train to compete? Um, I wanted to compete the whole time. I was very upset that. Wait, is she talking about with my injury or like um, I was younger? How do you know when Let's you're ready? See. I'm guessing. Oh, how do you know when you're ready to compete? Yeah. Um, I would say you're doing better in the classes. Like when you're training in the classes, you can feel you're executing the techniques like really well, and you feel confidence. If you don't have any confidence, it's going to be really hard to go out there in the tournament. So that's probably the best advice. Nice. Um, Alessia said that you did a TikTok with her. We did do a TikTok. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. I think I remember that when you guys did that. It was uh, all the girls. <laughs> so my brother, we'll, we'll talk about this later, actually. My brother says, tell the funny story about you weighing in Atlantic City. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get into that. And if anybody uh, has any more questions, I mean, you can keep asking. We'll, we'll we'll answer them right now. If not, we're just gonna move on to the rest of um, the, the interview. Um, I mean, I got a, I got a ton of questions still to ask you. Um, so Stephanie asked about your AC experience. Uh, Stephanie, I think we're gonna um, we're gonna get into that. 
like like literally the next thing we're going to get into. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit um, more jujitsu. But um, anyone else got any other questions that you um, want to ask her for now? Um, let me see what else I got for you over here. I mean, like right now, if, if you think about you, your 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 wrestling career, like what do you, you know, what would you would you go back and, and probably start earlier in your career wrestling? Um, maybe I would have done more club training. I I don't know if I would have started competing in wrestling yeah. before the eighth grade, but if I would have done more club training and just drilling more takedowns, I probably would have done that. Uh, that's very good. Uh, which is harder, wrestling or jujitsu? Um, it depends. It honestly, it does depend. If you start with jujitsu, then wrestling is a little bit easier. Well, not really, because you can't go on your back. But if you start with wrestling and go to jujitsu, I think that's a little bit easier. But there's more technique than jujitsu. There's like you got to know more. Yeah. Wrestling is three. T it's three positions in wrestling. Yeah. Um, my brother again. <laughs> Uh, how long do you think before you could get a black belt? Uh, a while, probably. I gotta, I gotta. What, win. what color belt are you right now? I'm a blue belt right now, and the deal that I have with my coach is that I have to win a world title at every single belt. <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty. That's uh, that's setting the bar pretty high for yourself. Right yeah. Now. So. And they said that's that's good. That's always very good. Um. Alessia asks if uh, she wants to do jiu-jitsu. At what age does she start? Uh, now. She should start now. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> she can. There's yeah. no age. Yeah. I mean, that's like, um, you know, when you start wrestling, you, you start wrestling. You know, you just you yes. gotta, get it going and stuff like that. You know, and she'd be good. She'd be good. She'd be good at jiu-jitsu. Um, her dad's, you know, into jiu-jitsu, into, into fighting and stuff like that. So it kind of all translates together. Um, what was your record this year for wrestling? I actually just saw it this morning because my coach had sent over the BC. There was like a dinner for Bergen County girls. So I was 23 and 9, and I uh, was 11 and 2 in the girls. Yeah, I was going to say, because you have two different records between the, 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 the girls and boys. But the I mean, 23 and 9 is combined. Combined, combined, yeah. combined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, let, I mean, when we talk about uh, actually, hold on. We have, what are your? We'll get one more. Um, what are your top BJJ techniques? Um, I like guard and I like submissions from the guard and some sweeps. I like Delariva a lot. Yeah, for some people who you know may not know what that is, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a position. Yeah. What's your nationality? Um, I'm a lot of different things, but mostly Italian. Nice. So you've been eating a lot of Italian food since you've been home in quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get in too much weight. we got to get you back on the mat. I know, I know. Um, all right. Well, we're going we're gonna to move on, guys, um, To and then we'll ask some more questions at the end. Um, I want to get into your sophomore year. Okay. Uh, no, your junior year. Junior, this year. Your junior year, yeah. yeah. So this year, your junior year, um, you get back into wrestling. Uh, like I said, I thought it was gonna be hard. I came back in, and um, you, you you came back. You 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 were you kind of were like on a mission. You were you were upset that last year your season was cut short. You thought you were gonna have an extent of an injury that's gonna prevent you from doing what you wanted in jiu jitsu as well. So it was kind of like you were, you know, like kind of wrestling with a little bit of a chimp on your shoulder. You know, uh, I know you got some new coaches into your program this year. Your professor at your uh, Jiu-Jitsu school was one of your assistant coaches this year, which was good because you you know you guys have that 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 bond that you guys had, so uh, that definitely helped you out. Um, what was your your goals and and what were your what what is it that you want to achieve this year that you were not able to last year? Uh, well, making it to the states was the first thing because since I did miss the first girl states, that was kind of a bummer to me. Like I was. Obviously, since wrestling since eighth grade, and I saw that girls wrestling was getting really big, and that's how they added it for the girls. My whole goal for my sophomore year was to get to the states and get make it to AC. And then when I couldn't do that, I knew like 
for my junior year that that was the goal. I, I got to get to States. Like, I got to do it. So that was probably – that was that was what I was wrestling for the whole year. Yeah. And um, I know this year you went to uh, what about two or three tournaments, opens this year? The girls' tournaments, yeah. yeah. How many? Three, two? Uh, two, two. One counties and then the one in Bloomfield and then, yeah, those two. Okay, so you won both of those tournaments. Yes. And you were this year's Bergen County champion as well, yes. right? Um, so you finish out your season out with your team. Um, you guys wrestle your regional state qualifiers uh, the same weekend as the boys' uh, districts. It was that Sunday, and you wrestled in um, Union. And, and um, the brackets were huge. You might have about 30-something girls in the bracket, huge bracket, big, wide range of girls from all over the place. They basically break it up for the north and the south. Um, you get put in the bracket. I don't think there were seeds, really, because I don't think you really got a, a great seed, right? What seed did you get? I think I was seeded third, maybe. Was it third? Well, okay. All right. Maybe we were seated better. Okay. So you're seated third or fourth? No, third. Third, third. I think. It was yeah, either third, third or fourth. One of those. Third, yeah. And, um, you know, you, you wrestle in the, in the region tournament. Oh, you got fourth, they said. Oh, fourth. fourth. I was seated fourth. Yeah, I got yeah. yeah, you were seated fourth. Um, so you're seated fourth, which means that you're in the upper bracket. You, you, you would have to wrestle the number one seed in the semis. Right? Because uh, the, well, the girl from Elizabeth was what seed? No, I, I think she – I don't even know. I don't I, know. I, I, I feel like you were the third seed, and then you – you you because Miley was the first seed, I think. Right? Yeah, she had come from the lower weight, and she bumped all the way – she was seated, like, second or in her – in the 114, and then she bumped up to – well, bumped down to 107, and then – so who was number one in the uh, – I don't know if it was an Elizabeth girl. It might have been. Oh, and they, I mean, they're saying, okay, whatever. I mean, <laughs> say you're, you're you're the four seed. I uh, I know you had um, you had you had uh, you had to wrestle in the semifinals, and you wrestled the um, the girl from Elizabeth, and um, super tough uh, match, and you know it was uh, it was back and forth, back and forth, and you ended up scrambling out of position and getting that pin. I mean, uh, she was tough. I mean, very, very tough. How did you feel after that win? Uh, it was, I think a lot of people were, well, I, it was like, I was getting in my own head a little bit. So I had, to, it was good that I had just like pulled through, focused and just did what I could do. Um, I, sometimes I get in my own head and I just gotta, but I know what I'm capable of. So I was just, I had to just be mentally strong and just get through it. So you had to go into finals and wrestle the girl Miley. Yeah. And a year before she took second in the state, um, we knew she was tough. I think she's also a grappler, correct, right? She's also yes. a grappler. She was a grappler. I mean, when I got to know, I mean, I really got into girl wrestling this year. And what I, what I noticed on on a lot of the brackets, there's a lot of girls that are jujitsu, you know, girls that are coming out for wrestling. Is that something that you're seeing too? That a lot uh, yeah, I think a lot of them are seeing that they can get scholarships, and that's like a big deal because you can't get a scholarship for jiu-jitsu. And if yeah. you can get something similar, so I, I think they figure they it's worth a shot, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you go, you're going in the finals. You know the girl that you were wrestling in the finals. Um, you know that she took second in the state. Um, what were your thoughts and feeling going into the finals? How, how did you feel? Um, I was nervous, just like I was nervous for every other match. Uh but at that point, I I was I was pretty confident uh, with myself uh, because I had already made it to states at that point. You know, uh, I had t placed I would have placed first or second, so I I was really happy that I had made it, and I w I was going to states. Obviously, I I was really upset after the loss, but um, it's all right. I, I redeemed myself in the states, so it's okay. <laughs> That's all, you know. So you take second in the region, you qualify for states. I know everybody's excited for you. We. We, we were super excited that you were going to finally get your chance to go down to Athletic City. Um, I know you saw pictures and, and maybe videos of, of what Boardwalk Hall looks like, um, but to actually see it on a computer screen and see it in real life. And when you first walked into that arena, 
and you saw those eight mats on that floor. Um, what were your thoughts? Um, I was I was kind of like shocked. I was I it it doesn't really hit you until you're there, and as soon as because the way we had walked in was through the the back. The back. The yeah. Back. So first I saw the the stage with uh where you could warm up, and then we had walked through the co the coaches and the athletes area where you can sit. And I was just, it was, it was really cool to see, see it in person for the first time. It's kind of very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, listen, the, the, what I meant by that was uh, you wrestled, I mean, you've competed in big, um, in, in big tournaments in your career and with that big, uh, big venues and stuff like that. But to be there for the first time in wrestling, um, in a big a stage like that. Um, is a little bit out of your element in wrestling world, but uh, I mean, next year you go back, you you already know how it felt and stuff like that. So it was kind of like maybe overwhelming in that sense. That's what I'm trying to say, you know. And 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 the thing is, uh, so you get put into a, a six man bracket, right, or eight eight man bracket, six 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 man bracket. And um, so I mean, we talked about this all year long. Uh, I mean, um, and. We had a couple people in mind that we were hoping that you'd wrestle, and uh, uh, one of the girls was Chloe Ayers, uh, who she won states last year. Her dad's the uh, head coach of uh, Princeton University. Um, she was somebody that we were looking, you know, forward to wrestling, and we knew that we had, you know, if we wanted the place, we were going to have to wrestle the girl Miley another time. And the girl from Trenton, Drumright, was uh, was tough too. Um, she was a very athletic girl, and um, you know, you went into that tournament, uh, you got a first round pin, and you got put into the semifinals against somebody that we've been looking forward to for wrestling. What were your thoughts going into that semifinals? Um, I was excited that I was able to wrestle someone, because my first match, I didn't wrestle her the whole season, and the second match, I didn't wrestle her the whole season. So it was, I was wrestling like higher level girls. So it was, it was definitely exciting, definitely something different, and, uh, of course, like I said, I, I was always nervous, so I was nervous going into the match. But um, it was—I was excited for it. it. It was like it was finally time to to wrestle. Yeah, I mean, she's a very, uh, you know, in retrospect, she competes at high levels, uh, equivalent to what you do in jiu-jitsu. Uh, wrestling is her sport. She does a freestyle all year long. Um, I think you guys wrestled a superb match against each other. Um, you know, just like in any other sport, you never want to leave it up to any refs or, or anything like that. You know, you go out there, you put it out on the mat, and whatever happens goes out there. Um, so, we, I mean, we, you know, as your wrestling coach as well, I mean, we take no excuses in, in our matches. And I think that, um, you know, I can speak for both of us. You know, I, I know you wish you could have had that match back. And uh, that was a match that was very winnable. I was sitting in the stands. A lot of people were into it. Like, you know, there was many girl, there was girl matches going on. People were kind of into it, but not really, like, into it. They were kind of staring at the boys, doing their thing and stuff like that. But you got everybody in my area into it because they knew she was the defending state champ. So they were like, they were like, who is this girl wrestling right now, you know? And I wanted to turn around and be like, yo, that's my girl, man. I mean, like, yo, <laughs> you know, I know how good she is. I mean, you may not know how good she is, but I, I know how good she is. So um, you lose a 4-2 a, a type match. Um so it puts you in a position now to go for third place. And now you have a rematch with Miley, uh, who you lost to in the region finals. First, I had to wrestle back. Oh, yeah. And then you wrestled back one match, yes. Yeah. You wrestled one back one match. And then you had to go and, and, and wrestle her for third place. Um, what uh, was your thoughts part two? Um, yeah. I kind of had a better idea of what to expect. And I knew I just had to go, like, we had worked on a lot of the mistakes that I had made in the match. So I was just going through all the sessions that we had done. And I was just, like, going through it in my head, like, okay, I got to do this and this and this. And um, I, obviously, it went well. It went in my favor. And uh, I was finishing all my shots. And I was just riding right. I was just doing it exactly how we were practicing it. So yeah. it ended up working out. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we watched film for a while, and we, we, we brought film into club, and we we said, hey, you're, this girl is beatable. Um, the only thing is you got to be able to finish all your takedowns. Yeah. And we worked on a lot of uh, single leg finishes. You got in a bunch of times, and, and you finished. Um, you even put her to her back. Um, 
totally different match. Uh, you know, the way I thought you could have done it at the regions yeah. um, is the way that you did it then. But at the end of the day, you did it when it count most. And you took third in the state. And you in your first year going down there, so um, that which was tremendous. Um, how did you feel? Uh, I know you wanted gold, but standing on top of that podium, being up there with all them girls in front of everybody, the whole arena, getting those pictures taken. How did you feel? Um, it was it was cool because obviously it's still new. You know, girls wrestling is new, so it was cool because everyone always says that they're like you're you're making history you're making history you're making history and uh standing in third place i'm definitely making history but next year it will be first place i, I without a doubt i i love the uh i love your the way you're thinking um yeah. i know that um a couple of those girls come back i know chloe does come back as well um depending on what weight uh you go next year and what weight she goes next year there could be a possibility of, of a rematch um and I know that's something that you know you're looking you're looking forward to. So I know that um, there is a possibility that some off season tournaments where you can maybe run into some of these girls again and, and wrestle them. Um, you know, so um, I want to congratulate you again for taking care. Thank you. Care. Yeah. I'm super proud of you. I know that next year will be your year. Um, your thoughts, your final thoughts on the wrestling aspect. Your thoughts on everything that happened this year for girls like what are your thoughts about girl wrestling in new jersey right now um i when i was looking at it last year looking at the numbers from last year to this year it's probably doubled if not you know almost tripled from last year which is really insane to think that all these girls are like coming out of nowhere pretty much and just deciding that they're gonna wrestle like a lot of these girls they don't some of them do jiu-jitsu but some of them don't do jiu-jitsu so it's really cool to see a lot of them just you know, coming out and trying something so different. You know, it's not, it's not track. You don't just go out there and, you know, run around. It, it's wrestling. It's not easy. So it is cool to see a lot of girls and then the, how the numbers are rising. It's, it's really cool. And especially um, bringing back up the point about how we were talking about it was my freshman year was just boys. Um, we, if I do dual matches and tries and quads and even some of the tournaments, with the boys, there's girls on almost every single team. You'll find at least one girl. So it's definitely getting bigger, which is really cool. Yeah. And, and my brother just he actually took the words out of my mouth. And I was going to say the same thing. He said they're coming out for the sport because of inspiration <laughs> that you were giving them. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, you know, um, you're a trailblazer for the sport of wrestling. You know, you and all the girls that are out wrestling right now. Because – Girls like Alessia, who are in their seven or eight years old, in you know, when by the time they get to high school, or maybe someone who's not even born yet, and people want to look back at the history books and they'll go back and they'll be like, they look at the first people. Like last year could have been a year to be the first time, right. but can go back and look back and, and say, wow, that girl, that girl. And you'll be older already, married and whatever, and you'll look back and you'll say, hey, this is the the, the path you 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 know pay for all the young girls and uh um i said that to you all year long that you you don't really know what you're doing but you are an inspiration to a lot of girls you know and a lot of the girls at the club everything especially um what would you say to girls who are who already trained bjj and are, are on the fence about wrestling for their high school that's a good question um i know a lot of schools don't have a girls program like my school in particular doesn't have a girls program so it is a little bit harder for them to just decide that they're going to wrestle. But if you feel in your heart and in your mind that you want to wrestle, I, you should go out there and you should give it a try. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just go oh, out you can there. get your arm dislocated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the act, it's like, it, it's a good experience. It's something yeah. that it, it's a lot of the times when I start wrestling, a lot of my coaches say that wrestling will change you. And I, I, I strongly agree. And I, believe that wrestling does change you as a person Let, let's just go, go to that story real, real quick uh bella did not have anything to wear to go to wayne's uh she didn't she forgot her shorts so we had to go to a store and go find her some uh some shorts to wear because she didn't have any so uh <laughs> she she got her shorts she weighed in and uh that's a story you know she uh uh next time you gotta remember your shorts yes all right? <laughs> Uh, what do you do to get stronger for wrestling? Um, 
Well, we're my school. We go to the weight room a couple of days a week, so I I take advantage of that, and then、uh, I have my own time where I can go and I can go lift and do what I gotta do、uh, to get stronger on my own time because you can't just rely on wrestling practice and for me jujitsu practice to get you stronger. You have to go out. You have to go do your own things. You have to do what other people aren't doing. That's the only way that you're gonna be better than them. I mean, I mean, guys. I mean, wrestling and jujitsu. I mean, this girl is.、Um, I mean, six, seven days a week training. I mean, this is like her. You know, talk about lifestyle. I mean, your your lifestyle is training. That is what you do. You know, and that's why you're you're a good girl, and and that's why you you know you're, you're out of stand in trouble and stuff like that because you're constantly training for the next big tournament, whether it's jujitsu,、uh, now wrestling. Um, and you're helping out with the, the teaching the、uh, jujitsu classes for the little kids.、Um, you know, a lot of people、uh, look up to you, and、um, when people watch your training,、um, which you should be doing a little bit more videos of your training,、uh, people, you know, you know, behind the screen are, are always staring and looking, and you're inspiring a lot of a lot of kids. You know, you inspire everybody. It does not just kids, girls, guys, everything. You know.、Um, Quick question I have for you guys. If you have any more questions, we only have about eight minutes left.、Um, quick question that I have for you, real quick,、uh, you you can answer is、uh, is is there MMA in your future? Um, I've thought about it, and um, anything is possible. To be honest with you, I've thought about a lot of crazy things.、Uh, I was thinking I would go to the Olympics for wrestling. So honestly, anything could be in my future at this point. I, I do want to try. My one goal in life is to. I want to be a well-rounded fighter, and if that means going and doing every single part of MMA, that's you know what I'm saying. Like I'll try every single type of martial art, and obviously MMA, getting in the cage and fighting someone is a part of it. So potentially it could be. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you have all the tools. You know, obviously you would have to work on your your stand-up game, and that's kind of where. Grapplers、uh, figure out if it is for them or not.、Uh, <laughs> I, I know you're reading dumb questions. I'm reading them too. You know, I'm reading them, but I'm going through a couple of questions.、Uh, no, Gim eight two two one. No, it's not. You can ask as many questions as you want.、Um, you know, you know. I mean, we could be here all day talking about you and your career and, and, and things that you're doing and stuff like that. I mean, there, are there any like?、Um, You know, kind of final thoughts that you you want to you know talk about? Any shout outs? Any coaches or stuff like that? Um, probably just you. To be honest with you, like for wrestling, uh, you've obviously helped me a lot. I had come off an injury and I decided to start training with you when the summer started. I was fresh out of the cast and I was like, no, I'm gonna be there. I'm committed. I'll be there. Once a week until we get a little closer, then I'm gonna start coming more, and it definitely paid off going because I definitely it definitely helped me with my wrestling, and I had gotten, you know, it sharpened me up, and I learned a lot in those like months, and because I didn't start with you until October, like of my sophomore year, so I only had about a month and a half to get ready for the season, so、uh, starting in June definitely helped me for this year because I, I was able to le learn a lot. And I appreciate that. I really, I really do, honestly, because you know that's why I do what I do, and 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 I love working with you. I think that I think that if that if your peak was up, if your peak is right here, I mean, you're 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 not even there yet, and and that's what's scary about you. What's scary about you is in in the wrestling world and aspect is you're a, you're 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 not a full time wrestler right now. I mean, and you're young, and you, I know I know how much you love jujitsu. I mean, if you put in, you know. Um, a quarter of the effort of what all those other girls that are wrestling all year long are doing. I mean, you would you would surpass them. I wouldn't even say catch up to them, surpass those people. You know, and 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 with what with what you develop with us in our program and stuff like that. And、um, that's just about your work, your work ethic, your commitment. And、um, I think that you know, you know you. Being around wrestling full time, I, I, my goal for you, and I told you this from the beginning, was to help you try to find a passion and a love for wrestling. And if you were find a passion and love for wrestling,、um, you know, it would be something that, you know, you, you would probably do everything you can to to be the best, you know.、Um, and 
you know, even if you never step foot on a college mat ever, um, and you do get into MMA or you do jiu-jitsu for the rest of your life, you know that wrestling will always be a huge part of your of your your repertoire. You know, all the time. Uh, my brother, let me see, Coach Dave. One day you'll be interviewing her. Yes, I hope to. I hope so. <laughs> now, if you put in half the work like you do jiu-jitsu, you'd be ridiculously good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, we know that. Um, any shout outs out to your uh, jujitsu coaches? Of course, Notorious MMA is home, always is home. Cordoba trained is probably really close right there, second home. Uh, I'll take that. Because if without, without Notorious, without Cordoba's, I wouldn't be half the person I am today. And that's where I spend my whole life. I eat, sleep, drink, that's everything. Jujitsu and wrestling is my <laughs> whole life. Without that, I, like I said, I wouldn't be half the person that I am today. Awesome, man. Awesome. And so we, we, we wish you all the luck in the world. I know we'll be seeing each other as soon as this coronavirus <laughs> quarantine thing is open. We'll be with each other full time, bring you into freestyle. And uh, we look forward to the rest of your career because you're going to be a superstar and no matter what you do. Um, and, um, you know, everyone should look forward to, to watching her. Make sure you follow. Can you tell your, uh, your uh, Instagram name? Uh, Bella Riva six seven three. Six 